makeup friends and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then hello and welcome. My name is Kara and today I'm going to be giving you an update on my project pan and spoiler we've got some empties. Very excited about that but before we get into it I'm going to address the makeup and also I just need to pay homage to my daughter for the earrings. We were walking the dog together and she hauled off and hit me in the arm and said punch buggy and it wasn't a punch buggy. It was like a Nissan Versa or something. Like it was nowhere near <laughs> what a punch buggy was. And then I remembered the, I had these and I had to show her that unless you see a vehicle that looks like this, do not hit your mother. <laughs> Didn't hurt. It was all in good fun, but still had to teach her what a VW bug was. Also what a VW toaster van was because she had no idea. So I feel like I'm, you know, doing good work as a mother also. I've introduced her to South Park and it's hilarious because now her and her brother, all they do is sing about Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. I will expect my mother to go bored in the mail anytime now. Okay, makeup that I'm wearing is new stuff that has arrived today. I just wanted to put it on my face. I haven't really formulated any thoughts yet, except possibly with respect to the eyeliner. So we'll get to that. Foundation. You'll have to let me know because it's hard for me to tell with all the lights on looking at myself in the mirror whether it is actually as good of a match as I think it is because when I first picked it up and when I first opened it today I did not think I was going to be able to make it work and yet I think that I have but I'll have to wait until I see the playback to really see what's going on here. It's like 9.30 at night so it's not like I can go check in natural light but at any rate this is from the new band, the new band, the new brand Basma. Uh, actually, I don't know if the brand itself is new, but it's brand new on the Sephora page. And so far they only have one product and it is this foundation stick. I used the Sephora match finder thing and it suggested shade 31. I do think it's a little bit deep, but I think it's workable. At any rate, here's what it looks like. Just twists up. I, first of all, all of my brushes just took a bath tonight. Like literally, this is the extent of my eye brush collection at this point. I've got four of them that are usable. The rest of them are currently drying in the laundry room. So I don't have any foundation brushes. So I used a sponge. A sponge is not my preferred application method, but it worked for this. I just found I had to like sort of drag it across the skin a little bit. So. We shall see, time will tell. I'm gonna continue playing with it. I will share my thoughts at another time. And then eyeshadow palette. I caved and I picked up the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette because it was on sale for 50% off on the Sephora website and I couldn't resist that. So this is what I've got going on on the eyes. I just used this shade here, this one here, and then this is what I've got all over my lids. I just wanted something really simplistic because I was hoping that this guy would be the star of the show. This is the new 24 seven ink liner from Urban Decay. This one is in the shade Freak. Hi, speaking of Freak. Hello. Hi, are you gonna come say hi or are you come say goodnight? Mm, I'm coming to say goodnight. Okay, but say hi. Hi everybody. Look how hairy he is. He got so He's Harry Berry. Mm. You're going to change walrus. your nickname. You're not going to be BDB Gary. anymore. You're going to be Harry Berry. <laughs> I love you. Yep. Good night. So anyways, new liquid liner. There's a few different colors. Obviously, this is the one that I picked up. I thought that it was going to be a little bit brighter than it is. I'll just do a little hand swatch for you. I am kind of squarely on the fence right now. It took a few coats to build it up to where it is right now. Maybe with different eyeshadow, it would pop a little bit more, but as of right now, I'm just feeling like it's kind of fading into the background. I was gonna look in the mirror on this one, but it's still covered up. I mean, despite having to use a few layers, like it's not cracking or crumbling, but I've also only had it on for like 15 minutes, so. Again, it's another product that I'm going to be testing out. I will share my thoughts on it with you. Certainly I don't see like a lime green liner as my everyday go-to, but it's nice to have some fun colors in the arsenal. So that's what's going on here. Lips are uh, from Fenty. 
This was from one of their holiday sets at the end of 2021, I wanna say, when they had a peach set come out, but that's what I've got going on on my lips. Now, having said all that, let's move into the project and let's start with the empties because that's always the most exciting part. So we have got the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day. If you'll remember at the end of the last update, which I will link the playlist if I haven't already, I'll link it now. Um, I had added in some like mostly done items and this was one of those. I think it was only up to about here or so. So I knew I was gonna finish it. Regardless, it feels good to finish a product. So I thought I would share that with you. As well, I finished my perfume. So Daisy is now completely empty. There is nothing left in there. And even when I do try to spritz it, nothing comes out. So she's done. I've had this for a long time and it feels good for it to be done. My laptop is telling me to do something, but I am not falling victim to that. It wants me to install Windows 11 and I'm not doing it because every time I do install stuff, all hell breaks loose. Not only did I finish Daisy, but I also finished this one here from Versace. This is Dylan Turquoise. I think it's my favorite. My happy replica from Dossier comes a very close second, but I think this is my favorite. Mm. I'm currently saving up my points in order to purchase a full size. I'm saving them up at Shoppers Drug Mart. There they have a great point system where you can actually redeem them for like cash off of your order, not just like deluxe size samples. Uh, and you don't have to like win the Hunger Games to get a gift card to the store. You just trade in your points and they take money off. So it's fantastic. So that's what I'm planning to do with this one. But I hadn't officially put it in the project, but I thought I would share it with you anyways. I've got some more empties. Do you want to keep going through the empties or should we just talk some progress and I'll string you along? I'm going to string you along. That's what I'm going to do. There's four more empties to talk about, uh, but we will get to them in due course. Let's do a few more progress updates. So we've got the primer that I've been working on. This is the silicone priming moisturizer from Good Molecules. And I really don't know why I used so very little at the beginning of the year. And then you can see sort of the steady jumps for the last two months. I mean, I'll take it. I haven't, I don't feel like I've increased the amount that I use. It's usually about two pumps, sometimes three if my skin is feeling particularly parched, but I can't explain why there's such an like increase in the amount of use I'm getting out of it. But suffice it to say, like it's gonna be done within the next month or two, which is pretty exciting. That's the whole point of these projects is to get use and finish items as best you can. So there is one that is on its last legs, but it's going to stay in the project for now. So next up, let's talk about the bronzer that I've been working on, and that is the Soleil Tan de Chanel from Chanel, obviously. And here is what it's looking like at this point. I definitely noticed some growth in that pan, and then this part over here is becoming very, very thin. It is getting a little tricky to get my brush into that little spot, so I'm just gonna keep continuing to work around the outsides, and then once there's just like a little bit, I'll probably scrape it and shove it all into the middle, but I think that's a long way off. Very happy with the progress, but there is still a ton of product in here. So we're just gonna keep trucking, but I really do enjoy this. I've said it every time I open this thing, I say it even when I'm not filming, I say it to myself. I love the smell of it. It just, oh, I don't even know. I, I try to describe it. It's sort of sweet, sort of floral, but just, mm, I just love the smell of it so much. And, it's just a really nice bronzer. I don't know that it's my favorite bronzer, truly. It does have a rather strong orange undertone. I think that I can pull it off. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing a powder bronzer today, but I just have to be careful and not go at like too heavy handed with the application. Okay, we have talked two updates, so let's talk another empty. So these two, we'll lump them in together. They were on their very, very last legs when I entered them into the project at the end of last month. First up, we've got the Hourglass uh, Vanish Airbrush Concealer. I had it in the shade Cotton, and it's completely empty. I haven't washed out the container, but there is nothing left in there. I can't scrape the sides, and I did take the stopper out. 
as well we've got the lip oil here from Ilia this is their uh, tinted lip oil the balmy gloss and I have it in the shade only you and I do intend to pick this up during the upcoming Sephora VIB sale again completely empty there's a tiny little bit at the very very bottom of the container but I can't reach it so she's done uh, but I just I find that it's like very flattering on the lips very comfortable to wear it's just great to like throw it in your purse touch it up on the go and you don't have to worry about it so glad that those two are done but definitely interested in picking up the Ilia in the full size okay couple more update ones then so the under eye powder that I've been working on this one here is from Laura Mercier it's the secret brightening powder and I say this every time I do an update basically I have the bottom of the container marked and then I kind of set it this way and I tap and I tap and I tap and I tap until the line of powder is as even as I can make it and then I mark it along the side and you can see it is just very steady progress there. I can't even begin to hazard a guess as to how much longer it's going to take me to finish all the powder that's in there. My guess is that it's going to be a while but at any rate I'm still trucking along with it still really enjoying it it sets my concealer into place it doesn't like provide any weird cast underneath my skin it doesn't clump up or like dry out my under eyes it just locks the concealer into place and that's all I really want it to do so mission accomplished then for foundation I've been using this one here from Lisa Eldridge this is the seamless skin foundation I always want to call it the skinless foundation seamless skin foundation in the shade six and again we're just making very steady progress on it I anticipate taking the better part of the year if not the full year to finish this because I have so many other foundations in the drawer that I am rotating through and then of course curiosity often gets the better of me and I'll pick up one to try out so it's not like I'm fully and exclusively dedicated to this one. It is my main bitch, but I do have some side bitches, if we can say. That's that's not me. I shouldn't say things like that. Okay, before we move on to a few more updates, they're frankly rather boring updates, so they can wait a moment. This one is also finished. I had added this in at the end of last month. This is the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes Mascara. It's a double-ended mascara and apparently it's just meant that you can use either side. You can layer them up if you want, but it doesn't really matter. I frankly liked both ends. As far as I can tell, the formula is the same on both ends. It's just a different wand shape. This one is a little bit more curved. The other one is more of your traditional style. Um, both of them have like those rubberized bristles. I actually really liked the mascara. I wouldn't purchase it because I just don't really care about the whole double-ended aspect. If they had it as just one or the other, I would pick either of them up. I didn't really have a preference. I think, honestly, I mean, given the choice, I would probably choose the one that has the more traditional shape to it, just simply because then I don't have to worry about, like, am I supposed to use the curved side, the concave, or the convex? I don't, wow, that's taking me back to high school, current concurve, concave. Wow, that takes me back to high school too, just me being an idiot. So overall, it's a good mascara. I'm glad I got my use out of it. I'm probably not going to repurchase it. Okay, let's get the two boring updates out of the way. We'll do one more empty and then I'll show you what I'm going to be bringing in. And I think some of these are going to be more long term. So not just bringing them in for the next four weeks and then at the end of, the, uh, of April they'll be out. So first up, eye primer. I added this at the end of last month. This is from Lorac, and it's gonna be hard to see. It's a black mark on a black tube, but hopefully you can see where that secondary line is. Again, I have made some progress on this. I don't expect to use it a ton each month because I only use like a tiny little bit, uh, but it's the only eyeshadow primer I have been using, so there you go. We're getting through it. Again, it's just a boring update. It's it's a totally fine eye primer. Again, I wouldn't purchase the full size of it. I prefer an eye primer that like masks the discoloration and this one is completely clear, but it does help the shadows blend out on top of it. I don't find that it's like particularly grippy for them, but it does 
provide a nice smooth canvas for blending shadows on top of, so it does its job. And then lastly, we have the RCMA No Color Powder. Yes, it is housed in e.l.f. packaging. That's because RCMA, while they make a great powder, they don't know how to package their stuff for shit, that's for sure. Uh, the package that it comes in, it looks like a spice container and you can't like get a brush in there and then like pouring it out, it's just a pain in the dick. So at any rate, here is what it looks like. There's still a ton of powder in here. I don't use a lot. I do powder my face, but I don't touch it up throughout the day. I don't use a very heavy hand when I am powdering. So this is gonna take forever, but the whole point is just to use it up because it's such a giant package that I just want it out of my drawer. All right, so I promised you another empty. If you've been following along in this series, do you have any guesses as to what it is? Because it's been around since like February of last year in my 2022 project pan, and it is Flexitarian from ColourPop, and it is completely empty. I actually just finished this tonight as I was applying my makeup. I did use a little bit of a heavier hand than normal if I'm being perfectly honest, but that's because there's just like this tiny little speck left and it wasn't enough to highlight tomorrow. So we just went a little heavy with it, put it in the inner corner and on the cheeks and she is done. That's like the end of an era. I have been working almost exclusively on this highlighter for over a year. Um, and I am happy to see it go. I really do love this highlighter. I am not in a hurry to purchase anything from ColourPop at the moment. They're just not a brand that I'm jiving with currently. I'm not like full on boycott mode or anything of that sort, but it, it would cost me a ton in shipping just to purchase this one item. So I'd be waiting for a free international shipping day anyways, or like waiting until I have enough in my cart to justify free shipping. And I just, I don't see myself getting there because I'm just not even looking at what their releases are. So that being said, those are all the items that we talked about at the end of last month. And now I do have some other items that I'm going to be bringing in. And like I said, I think a couple of these at least are going to be longer term items, meaning it's just going to take longer than like a month to finish them up. Although this one here probably going to be finished by the end of the month. This is just a little deluxe size sample of Marc Jacobs Perfect. You might be able to see just back here. I've actually got it in a full size because I loved this one so much, except I bought the intense version and I kind of have regrets about it because they're not wrong. It is very intense. That one, the full size, is more like a spray and walk into it kind of deal, whereas this one you can apply directly and it's not going to like peel the paint off the walls. This one, it still smells really good, that full size. It smells really good, but it's just really strong and it lasts a really long time. This one's a little bit more user friendly. So I'm going to put this one into the project, finish it up. As you can see, there's a ton of options here. And in that little colorful cup back there, it's all samples. So I have a ton of fragrance options, which is also why I'm okay saving up my points and waiting to get the full size of this one because I have a ton of other fragrances that I can work on. Now, also coming in, and also one that I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take, but probably not too, too long. This here is from Clarins. It's the Natural Lip Perfector in the shade 01. What that's actually called, I don't know, because it just says 01 on here. And it's got one of those, like, fluffy little applicator thingies. How do you describe that? Like, the, like, cotton tip? I don't know what the hell it is. Anyways, the product just like comes up through it. I find it really comfortable on the lips, so I like to put this on before like as I sit down to do my makeup and then my lips are nice and hydrated. It is something that I would just wear on its own as well. I don't think that it's great for like overnight use. It's not quite to that degree, but as just like an everyday keep your lips moisturized while you're doing your shit throughout the day, it's a great option. Obviously, this is just like a little free sample that I got with a recent Shoppers Drug Mart order that I made, uh, but I'm really enjoying it. So I'd consider purchasing the full size, but right now, I'm, I'm good for right now. I'm good for right now. I'm enjoying what I have. Now, the two that I have left that I think are going to take a lot longer, one is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk. 
and I just realized that I did not mark the progress on it. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, so that's where we're at here. Again, a little goes a very long way with this product. I have completed one of these entirely before. I can't remember the name of the shade. I want to say Spotlight. It was like the champagne color that they had. I do prefer that shade to this one, but it works. Like it's not so pink that it looks a little weird on my skin tone. So it's just been languishing in my drawer while I've been working on Flexitarian. I've had it for quite some time, so I just want to use it up and move it on its way. So hence it's going into the project. And then it did take me some hemming and hawing and then I finally realized like this is my project so I get to make the rules. And the rules for this product is I just want to hit pan. It's not even about finishing it completely. I just want to hit pan on it and it's this powder here from Jouer. This is the Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder in Radiant Translucent. So there is quite a good dip going on in there already but nowhere near pan. I just use it as a finishing powder. It does have a little bit of radiance to it, but nothing too over the top. I have been rotating through my finishing powders, but this is one that I just keep coming back to. So because I'm enjoying it so much and because ultimately I want to finish my finishing powders, I may as well throw it in the project and just really drill down until we hit pan. Once I hit pan, I can decide from there if I want to keep it in the project until I finish it. But for right now, it just feels a little less overwhelming if I just give myself some grace and say all I need to do is hit pan. Okay, so there we have it. There is the rapid fire update for you. If you are doing any sort of project work, let me know down below what frustrations you're having, what success you're having, what you would do differently, any tips and tricks, all that good stuff. Just share it all down below. But otherwise, I'm going to thank you for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.